We've all had those days of studying. Where we've got the entire day set aside and you know that you're gonna make so much progress on your studies and you're so excited for it. You're gonna crush that MCAT. You're gonna destroy whatever test you're planning on doing and it's gonna happen today. And then like five o'clock rolls around and you're like, well crap, I've done nothing. I actually did that today. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the three biggest things that I noticed whenever I was MCAT studying. And even now as I'm step studying to take my step two exam for medical school, the three biggest ways to ruin a good study day so that we can make sure that we avoid that and make progress efficiently. I'm all about having as much free time as we can. We do have work that we have to do. We're trying to be doctors. We have work that we have to do that has to get done. The best way to do that is to be efficient. For those of you that don't know me, my name's John. I'm a third year medical student. I spent several years as a professional MCAT tutor for some of the big box names. And now I have this YouTube channel and this company with my sister Maggie. We do our best to bring you free advice about the MCAT and, and hopefully medical school in the future to make sure that you're not walking on this journey alone. Now the first thing that gets in the way of me having a good study day is delaying the start. I notice that if I delay the amount of time or I decrease the amount of time between whenever I wake up and whenever I start studying, then I usually get more done before you know noon. Now, some of you are night owls and some of you are early morning birds. I like to get most of my studying done in the morning, and you know, as as you get older, your circadian rhythm kind of shifts towards you operating better in the morning, anyways. And as you get into medical school, you know, you'll be required to be at the hospital at 5 a.m. a lot of the time so your peak performance windows will kind of shift earlier but for now where you are if you were just studying for the MCAT and your whole day is marked out for studying for the MCAT I wouldn't try to adjust that circadian rhythm just lean into what your body does best but when you get up try to aim to be sitting down at your desk studying within 30 minutes I know that like morning routines are really popular right now and people like to do like cold showers and ice baths and I'm definitely that tool that has tried a lot of that stuff, but I have noticed that it just eats up an extra hour or two that I could have been studying. And so decreasing the amount of time between when I wake up or whenever I get off work school you know they keep you there until like five o'clock and then you have to study afterwards decrease the amount of time between that task and when i start studying then i have noticed that i magically get more done and then i magically have more free time at the end and doesn't it feel so much better to have free time at the end after you've already accomplished the task than it does to take your free time and play video games all day whenever you know looming in the back of your head there's a youtube video that you have to make because you've got an audience that's been great to you and you really need to provide them some valuable content that happened today so mistake number one delaying your start. Don't delay your start. Start studying as soon as you think about it. Mistake number two, this actually happens while you're studying and that is you see something that you know you don't know and you'll say, I'll learn it later. So one of my favorite resources for the MCAT as well as for medical school is UWorld and it has this great notebooks feature to where you can kind of like copy the text that's in their, their answer descriptions and you can paste it into a notebook. And I've had a really bad habit of trying to get through a question block quickly and basically copying from those answer guides and moving it to my notebook and telling myself like, okay, I'll read that now and then I'll really conceptualize it later whenever I go back through and reread these notes. And then what happens is one of two things. I either A, literally don't ever go back and reread those notes, which has happened an embarrassing amount of times, or two, it takes me for freaking ever to get through those notes. And so my last clerkship exam, my last board exam for pediatrics, I made a deal with myself that I was not going to do that. <laughs> that if whenever something came up and I didn't know it, I was going to learn it right then. And if that kind of kicked back, um, you know, me finishing that question block that day, well, then that's okay because I have identified a weakness a content weakness that is like the whole point of studying is to find things that you don't know and it's not as comfortable it's more difficult to focus on the things that you don't know and that's why it's very tempting to kick it off and say I'll learn it later you know if, if you're going through the amino acids and you miss a question because you didn't know which ones were charged man make sure that you know all the charges then because it's gonna pop up or anything along those lines if you miss a question because you didn't know the nomenclature for organic chemistry well go ahead and learn the freaking nomenclature now don't just be like okay ketones O-N-E, that's all I need to know for this question. Like, no, if you didn't know aldols either, if you didn't know carboxylic acids or oic acid things, things like that, like when you figure out you don't know something, just learn it right then. So that whenever you lay down at night, you can go through a list and you could tangibly write out the things that you learned. So mistake number two that you need to avoid is saying that you'll learn it later. When you identify the mistake, fix the mistake. And the third way to have a horrible study day is to not have a goal for that day. If you wake up and you say, I'm gonna study, 
study today, you are not gonna get as much done. You have to be intentional about your efforts. You are very smart, otherwise you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be watching this video if you weren't smart. It takes a pretty intelligent person to get to this point in their training to think that I have a chance to become a doctor, I can take the MCAT. It takes an intelligent person. And so you are smart enough to do this, but growing up, our whole life has kind of been structured for us by adults, and the onus to study by ourselves has not really been there. And I think that's actually where a lot of people slip up on the MCAT. That's what makes a lot of it difficult is, you know, for undergraduate classes, you've got a quiz every week and then you've got your test in four weeks. So you, you're forced to study every single week. You're forced to study specific things. You have a syllabus. But if you don't have a goal whenever you're studying, then that whole day may kind of just wash over you. Maybe you took 10 questions and read a chapter of Kaplan and you watched the Khan Academy lesson and you really didn't make any tangible progress. So there's a few types of goals that I like. Number one is a time goal. You know, if you say, hey, I'm going to study for four hours. I hate my phone because it gets in the way. And so I will set timers and I'll say, I will study for one hour and then I'll check my phone. That's a good goal. Timing goals are great. Other goals are progress goals. And this can be, I'm going to finish a specific chapter of the IFD high yield book, or I'm going to watch the first five video lectures on IFD's high yield e-course or something like that. Know that you can make tangible progress and chip away at it. Something that you can really track. Another goal that I use a lot in med school is I'm going to work 40 questions and review 40 questions. And that might take me two and a half hours is usually what it takes me. I might get through in two hours and that's awesome. I have an extra 30 minutes to spend with my wife or my dog. My dog's not there. She usually is. It might take me three hours. It might take me three and a half hours. I don't know, but I've got a goal and I'm committed to that goal. I'm going to get through those questions. And an honorable mention for a great way to ruin all progress that you're making in a study day is checking your phone too much. iPhones have that great focus application on it. I mean, you, know, you just kind of swipe up and hit focus. They even have like a cool little stethoscope icon for one of them. And I highly encourage you to do that. Don't check your phone. Set time limits for how often you can check your phone. You know, I can feel myself itching to just get on Instagram or something stupid like that while I'm studying because it's a lot more boring to study than it is to watch, you know, like a cat video or something stupid like that. So there you go. That's three ways to just have a horrible study day. I'm more than happy to make a video in the future about having a horrible study plan and what that can look like. If you want to see that video, then let me know in the comments. But this is just a way to have one horrible study day. That's three mistakes that I try to avoid every time I sit down to study. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.